never understand why they're so upset. I think there might be one or two reasons. Well, well, yes, but I did warn them. I don't think they see it that way. Ah, here we are. Let me just get the key. You might want to speed that along. Stop! I order you to stop! Come on! Perfect timing. Stop in the name of the Draconian Empire! Well, that was all wrapped up rather neatly, don't you think? The Verex system is safe, the Draconians have learned a much needed lesson in humility, and the native people of the planet Poe can now live their lives free from oppression. A lesson in humility? Funny way of saying you blew up their entire fleet. It was a harsh lesson. What about the resistance movement of native Povians you got me to raise up? Ah, yes. That was quite the speech, by the way. Very inspiring. They were all slaughtered. Thousands of them. Indeed. A necessary sacrifice, I'm afraid. Without the distraction their assault on the Empire building created, I'd have never been able to sneak in and broadcast that self-destruct algorithm to their fleet. And when were you planning on telling me this? Well, I just did, didn't I? I told you not to use me as a pawn anymore. Well, in this case, you were really kind of a knight. I had to watch thousands of those people die. After I promised them a better life. A brighter tomorrow. Now they'll never get to see it. Their families will. And their children's children's children will sing songs of the price their ancestors paid for freedom. Very poetic, but it doesn't change the fact that you just sent them to die. It was regrettable, but necessary. You fought a war. You know what it's like. When I was at war, every life counted. We never left a man behind. And where did that strategy get you? Your point being... Okay, indulge me for a moment and you'll find out. Time for an old Earth history lesson. Yay. On 19th of April, 1841, a ship named the William Brown struck an iceberg and sank to the bottom of the sea. It took 31 passengers with it, and 16 more were crammed into an overcrowded lifeboat and left adrift in the freezing North Atlantic. You have a thing about tragedies at sea, don't you? Well, they do have a certain romance to them, yes. Anyway. A storm started to threaten them from afar. If any of them were going to survive, then the lifeboat would have to be lightened. The captain decided that the only sensible option would be to force some people over the side. He reasoned that such an act would not be unjust, because if he did nothing, they would all have drowned anyway along with everyone else. Now tell me, would you do the same? Or would you do nothing in the knowledge that it would doom everyone? I'd try to save everyone. There has to be a way. There's always a way. Not always. Sometimes it's impossible to get it right. And on those days, you just have to take the best bad option. So, when saving everyone isn't an option, what do you do? I'd do it. You would? If necessary. Fascinating. And what happened to saving everyone? If I do nothing, everyone dies. Exactly. But it's not the same. What isn't? The situations. William Brown didn't have a time-travelling alien who blows up planets. Are you ever going to let that go? I'm just saying. I don't see why any of the Povians had to die. You could have easily doctored things up without any need for a big battle. Doctored things up? <laughs> well, yes, that's true. I could have easily snuck in, fiddled around with some wires, made a big speech and blown them all up. But what would have happened after I left? What do you mean? Well... The Draconians would have come right back and taken out their anger on the locals. This way, they know all the Povians have teeth. They're to be respected, not subjugated. Unfortunately, the only way to do that is through bloodshed. I suppose. Doctor, what's that beeping on the monitor? Let's have a look. Oh, um. Oh, I see. Well, that might be a problem. Looks like we'll have to postpone the ethics lesson. What's wrong? This ship. The technology is pretty top-notch, right? Infinite legroom, travel through space and time, lovely Italian restaurant. Yeah, especially the ravioli. Why? Well, it was a museum piece when I stole it. And that was a very, very long time ago. And? 
that ship out there? It's the state-of-the-art Battle TARDIS. Bleeding Edge Temporal Destroyer. Its coffee machine is more advanced than anything on this ship. Oh dear. I know. It's awful. Who drinks coffee? I can see how that might be a problem. Oh, it'll be fine. Let me just get in touch and we'll sort this right out. They're not responding. Oh, never mind, it's fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just fine. You said fine too many times. And you just couldn't resist the rhyme. Stop deflecting. I'm not an idiot. Don't lie to me, Doctor. Are we safe? Yes. Uh, as long as they don't fire on us, we'll be perfectly... <laughs> A chronotonium torpedo! Okay, we're not safe. We're not safe. Another hit like that and we'll lose the outer. What was that? The outer shell! It's been breached! Hold on, Maria. Take my hand. The navigation system is offline. I have to materialize blind. We can't take another. Oh, the TARDIS is burning! Oh, girl, not now! Please! Another, another torpedo heading our way. Maria, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? There's nothing I can do. Doctor? Who said that? Where are you? Why have you clapped my eyes shut? What are you talking about? Wait, no, shut up. I can still blink. Have you blinded me? I can't be blind. I love seeing. No, I think it's just dark. Oh, hello, Maria. When did you get here? I don't know. I remember the TARDIS was crashing. There was a big explosion, then a searing pain all over my body. Eventually I lost consciousness and wake up here. How about you? Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh no! The TARDIS! My dear sweet girl! She's gone! Doctor? I'm sorry. She always took me where I needed to be. Where are we anyway? No idea. I can't see a thing. So we have no TARDIS, no visibility, no idea where we are, and there's a heavily armed temporal destroyer still out there looking for us. That about sums it up. Well, normally I'd be really excited about that. We should probably take a look around, figuratively speaking. The ground is pretty solid. The atmosphere is breathable. No wind to speak of, but we're definitely outdoors. Which is a little bit worrying. Why is that worrying? No stars. Which would explain the darkness, but that's impossible. We'd have to be right on the edge of the universe. So, how is the breathable atmosphere? How have we not instantly frozen to death? Nothing about this makes any sense. Maybe we're in a universe with a different set of physical laws. I suppose we can't rule it out. Look over there, Doctor. Sun. It's rising. I can make out a landscape. That's a lot of rocks. Almost looks like a quarry. Doctor, it's getting pretty hot. Yeah, that appears to be a blue supergiant. Surface temperatures range anywhere from about ooh, 20 to 50,000 degrees Celsius. That's rather a big problem for us because bone tends to evaporate at 1500. Any bright ideas? We need to find shelter. Now. Over here. Into this cave, quick! Oh yeah. Never would have thought of that on my own. 
I've learned not to take that chance. It's cold. Yeah, it is a bit nippy. Well, that's strange. A lack of direct exposure shouldn't make that much of a difference to the temperature. What do you mean? I mean, we should be bursting into flames right now. Well, that's good, isn't it? Is it? It's a bit convenient. There just happened to be a cave there, too. Can't say I'm not relieved. What now? Well, I guess we just camp out here till sundown. When will that be? No idea. That's very odd. What's wrong? I can't feel the ground beneath my feet. I can't smell anything either. Now that you mention it. Do you hear that? I know that sound. You do? Yes. This way. Question. Go on. When did this cave become a corridor? A corridor? Oh yeah, it is. Hang on. Stop here a second. And when did you start giving orders? At ease, soldier. Look at the insignia on the wall. An eagle clutching a mouse in its claws. Very pleasant. It's the symbol of the Primarch. But that's impossible. What's impossible? This is Helena Prime. <sighs> but Helena Prime was purged by the Daleks. The Primarchs were wiped out. Apparently not. It must be a secret base. That raises more questions than it answers. Can you think of a better explanation? Uh, not yet. Look at these doors. They're holding themselves. This location is far too exotic to be a simple prison. Maybe they're being kept for experimentation. Maybe. I can't see inside. I wish they'd shut that alarm up. Yeah, it's very distracting. You hear that? I hear that. Hide? Hide. You men keep watch. This prisoner is exceptionally valuable. Mom? What's going on? The facility is under attack, resistant scum. Not her. Shouldn't we be facing them head on? Don't be foolish. If they get past the other guards, there must be another line of defence between them and this prisoner. Yes, ma'am. Anyone but her. I don't know what value you place on your lives, but I assure you, this prisoner is worth far more to the Primarch. There's at least a dozen of them. Heavily armed. I can handle this. I'll lead them away. Maria, wait! Down with the Primarch! You are to remain here and guard this prisoner. They possess sensitive information which could prove instrumental in crushing the resistance. I said down with the Primarch? Anyway, I'm taking a shuttle out of here. I'll need to file a report to Central Command. Good luck, gentlemen. I doubt I'll be seeing you again. It appears they can't hear you or see you. It's fascinating. For the Primarch! Yes, yes, for the Primarch and all that. Maria, get down! It can't be. Maria! Did you see that? She passed right through you. It's like we're ghosts. Sounds like things are about to get interesting. Hold fast, men! They're about to breach that door! Why do you fight? For the Primarch! Who do we fight for? For the Primarch! They really are insufferable, aren't they? Yep. Who are you going to die for? For the Primarch! Well, that was anticlimactic. Wow, what do they expect being all clumped together like that? That was easy. I feel insulted. Riggs? Sledge? You know them? Yes, I... What were they expecting? All clumped together like that? It can't be. This is the one, right? It can't be. We should make this quick. This is impossible. This is completely impossible. Set the charges. Blow the door. Textbook. Are you in there? What's wrong? Maria? I can see you. It's okay. You're safe now. Can you hear me? Are you hurt? Maria? Maria, please say something. It's me. I remember this. I... It's Dash. We found you. Just like I promised. I deserve... Yes, you deserve freedom.
Come, let me help you stand. Oh, you look like you haven't eaten weeks. No. Ah. What's wrong? She scratched me. I deserve to die here. Leave me. Maria, we broke into the most heavily guarded prison on the planet to save you. You can't just... The woman you came to save is gone. Leave now. I deserve to die here. I don't know what they've done to you, but I promise we'll cure it. Riggs, Sledge, help me grab her. Honest. No! Get back! Watch out! I deserve to die here! I deserve to die! Any ideas? Primus sedative round. I'm sorry, Maria. I deserve to die here! I deserve... I've got her. Come on. Let's get out of here. On, on it. it. Maria. Let's get out of here. Yeah. I'm sorry. For what? Reliving past trauma. It's not easy. Oh. To be honest, I barely remember it. That sedative was some strong stuff. Plus, I was being rescued. True. But what were you in prison for? I already told you. I was part of the resistance against the Primarch. Well, yeah, I knew that, but the officer said you had exceptional value. Why? I'd rather not talk about it. Suit yourself. Look at our surroundings. It's turning back into the cave again. That's nice. Nice? It's amazing. It's like our minds were sent backwards through time. I'm glad you enjoyed it. it does raise a lot more questions, of course. You can scratch that Prime March remnant theory off, at least. I guess in a loose sense, you could call that progress. Well, that's reassuring. I can see the mouth of the cave. The light's receding. Looks like the sun's setting. We should head back up to the surface. Why? We're much safer down here. For you, maybe. Well, if you insist. After all, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Who said that? Marcel Proust. Lovely fellow. Shame he never learned to accept himself. Eh, he's a bit pretentious if you ask me. There's a philistine and an aesthete in all of us. Another one of your drinking buddies. Orson Wells. Saved him from a haunted room of mirrors once. I think the experience had an effect on him. I get it. Citizen Kane, right? No, I'm talking about real life. You can tell the difference between life and fiction, right? Sure. One's filled with lies, monsters and tragedy. The other one's fiction. Yeah, the lies do tend to get blurry. Especially with Orson Wells as a drinking buddy. Looks like the edge of the cave. <laughs> he was such a lightweight. Well, here we are. A desolate wasteland of darkness with the sun that will kill us instantly on rapid rotation. Populated only by the nightmares of your past. When you put it like that, things sound pretty bad. On the contrary. I take a great deal of comfort in the current circumstances. Comfort? How could you possibly date comfort in this? Well, it's only your nightmares. Do you... Hear that? I'm afraid so. Come on, hide. Behind those rocks. Those rocks that weren't here before. I'm not about to question it. Look at that ship. It's enormous. Just imagine how big it is on the inside. That's the one that shut us down, right? Yes. In that case, I'm not overly keen on bumping into the other. Stay down.
some sort of bone plate armour? Something about this feels really wrong. What sort of animal has bones like that? The kind that never existed, thanks to me. You can hear us. I can. What do you mean, never existed? You don't seem alarmed by my appearance. Don't dodge the question. Very well. I mean that after I ripped out this creature's skull to make my helmet, I erased its entire species from history. You're wearing a paradox. But why? Why wipe them out? They posed a threat to the timeline. They needed to be destroyed. I had my orders. Orders? And you kept one as a trophy? Aye, I did. How does that make you feel? Kind of impressed, honestly. Good answer. Such a pity. What does that mean? It means... Maria Swift of Helena Prime. You pose a threat to the timeline. You need to be destroyed. I have my orders. It means we have to run. Come on! What did she mean about the timeline? I have no idea. Can we save this when we're not being shot at? We're always being shot at! Well, make sure you don't get hit. That's a dematerialisation gun. One shot from that thing and you'll be wiped from space-time. Okay, so I'll be dead. No, you'll be erased from the timeline. It'll be as if... You never existed. Possible teleporter. Very impressive. And you've cornered us. I'm versed in your methods. Yeah, you seem very well acquainted with me indeed. Have we met? It doesn't matter. It doesn't? I mean, it doesn't. Not to you. You won't remember this. You'll wake up safe and sound on your TARDIS, alone as you've always been. And what if it doesn't take? (laughs) You've said that before. Unfortunately, your journey ends here, Maria. Well, technically it never started. So I saved you the bother. You're welcome. No! What are you doing? Move! You have to shoot me first! Those aren't my orders. Back away now. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. Well, what's the hold up? Shoot me. Wipe me from existence. End my life. Stamp my ticket. I dare you. You dare? You're like me, right? You can see through the fabric of the timeline. The ripples and sparks of creation that sift through the infinite tapestry. You know what erasing me would do to the existential status quo. We have ways of filling those gaps. Now back away. What are you talking about? In a few moments, it won't matter. This is your last chance. Get out of the way. I'd rather not have to hurt you. But here we are. What do you... Oh, you've still got it. Doctor? The way I see it, you need her erased from the timeline rather than well done, correct? Correct. And, despite being able to afford to erase me from time, it would be a lot of paperwork for whatever organisation you represent. So you'd much rather avoid it, correct? Also correct. Well, I propose that for now, we each take our respective hiding places and sit out this sudden rising temperature. I can agree to that, but only to erase her from the timeline. Do not overestimate your significance, Doctor. Well, since I didn't bring my sun cream, I just have to accept that. It's not easy being ginger, you know. We all need to move. Now. You can kill me later, alright? I intend to. Yes, fine. Let's just go. Oh, I didn't get to do my... Into the cave! I thought you hated the cave. Cave! Now! Alright, alright, into the cave. You know, I can't shake the feeling I've run into her before. What do you mean? Nothing substantial. Just an odd sinking feeling in my stomach. I only get that feeling when I've wronged someone. Wronged someone? Yeah. You have an empathetic stomach? All the things that have happened to us today, and that's odd to you. Oh, it's clearly odd to you too, or you wouldn't have brought it up. Shut up. You only say that when you lose. 
And you only get snappy when you're scared. And you're not. I didn't say that. Oh look, Primarch Sigil again. Back on Helen and Prime, I guess. Be it ever so humble. These corridors aren't as inviting as before, are they? Also smells a bit different this time. Vile blood, urine and... feces. Yeah, quite the cocktail. Mixed in with a bit of hot iron and burning wood. Very medieval. No school like the old school. There's a bit of recollection in your voice. Is this really the time to get poetic? Don't deflect. Fine. I know where we are. I remember this. And? I'd rather take my chances with the sunrise. I get like that when I run out of tea. Glad you understand. Always. Never let it be said I have a dearth of empathy. Never in so many words. <laughs> Do you hear that? Behind this corner. Here, here. Not this. Maria? Maria! Stop gazing at your navel and focus. What? Someone is in terrible pain. I need you to firmly be in the here and now. Can you do that? I'm so sorry, Doctor. It's me. Yes, I know it's you. You need to get your head in the game if we're going to stand any chance of... No! No, I mean, it's me. You really should stop being so stubborn, Maria. The gag's for your own good. We wouldn't want you biting off your own tongue. Of course, if you have something helpful to say. As long as I'm alive, I'll never help you. But you've been such a great help to us already. More than your flaccid little mind could ever comprehend. What are you talking about? I'll never tell you anything. I never needed you to. I don't understand. Why are you doing this then? Why not just kill me? Because since being captured, you've killed three of my men and bit off another's ear while your head was being shaved. I liked my hair. What's your point? My point will become abundantly clear in due course, but first, I must confess something. What do you know about torture? I know you like to think you're very good at it. True as that may be, it's far from my point. Torture is a crass and uncivilised method of information extraction. Under duress, someone will tell you whatever you want to hear, with little regard as to whether it's true. Put simply, torture doesn't work. Then why would you do it? Because it's fun. Because you deserve it. You're a killer. A monster preying on the weak and innocent while pretending to fight for them. I fight for everyone under the oppression of the Prime Arch. Liberty shall live again. Such pretty words. Clearly not yours. You're not fighting for liberty. You're just another lost child who thinks that the disruption of the natural order can bring about their selfish whims. There's nothing natural about your order. Big words coming from a repugnant little speck like you. I fight and kill to further our civilization. You want to take us back to the archaic wasteland of democracy and freedom of expression with no understanding of the costs involved. I know what it costs to win a war. Well, I'm glad you think so. It'll make the destruction of your little rebellion all the more poignant. What are you talking about? Even after I'm dead the resistance will- Your death will end the resistance. You really think there won't be consequences to your last attack? You think the public will still stand with you after what happened? We'll gain back their trust. We're fighting for... You're fighting for your own destruction. Civilian sympathisers are already cutting ties with the resistance. They're losing supplies, weapons and morale every day and it's all your fault. No. They'll find a way. They have to. Well, they certainly seem to think that you can offer some kind of salvation. Well, there's a rescue mission being planned. Apparently, they believe that by saving you, they can score some kind of symbolic victory and reinvigorate their little revolution. If you're trying to give me false hope, it won't work. I've made peace with death. With your own, perhaps. What was that? What did you put in me? 
A tracking device? The latest in off-world technology. Completely untraceable by anything your friends can get a hold of. Still, you might feel some slight itch in your neck. They will come for you. And you will lead us to their secret headquarters, where you will give them the information required for a crippling counter-attack on the Primarch. When you assemble your forces for this attack, we will strike. The entire leadership of the Resistance decapitated in a single strike. Anyone we don't kill will be left to go to war over the scraps of your rebellion. Within a year, your movement will cease to exist. Total victory. And it's all thanks to you, Maria. You really think that'll work? I'll tell them as soon as I'm free. You really think I'm telling you this for your benefit? I just like hearing it out loud. I'm afraid you won't remember anything we don't program you to. No. Stop. I know. I know. It's not the most conventional stay of execution. But at least you get to give back to society. You won't get away with this. You won't. You deserve to die here. And you know it. This way, you won't be alone. No. No. The prisoner is being purged as we speak. Preparations for reconditioning will commence shortly. Goodbye, Marie. And good luck. Maria. I'm so sorry. Don't you dare. What do you mean? I don't need your pity. I deserved everything that happened to me. Then why are you crying? Because they didn't. Oh, Maria. There was nothing you could have done to save the resistance. What matters is the here and now. I still need you. And so do all the other people we're going to help once we get out of this. You, me and the universe. How does that sound? I wasn't talking about the resistance. What? It's getting colder. The sun's receding. Let's go. Maria, what are you talking about? No. What do you mean, no? Once I tell you, I can never untell you. Tell me what? I did something. Something horrible. Something that cannot be forgiven. You should never have saved me on Teardrop. I'm a killer. A monster. I don't care. What? I don't care. I don't care about anything you did in your past. You wouldn't say that if you knew what I'd done. Maybe. But that isn't the point. Then what is? That you wanted to help people. That you still do. Whatever mistakes you've made, there's always another way to do better. And that's all I ever do. I totter around the universe trying to do better. That's why I want you to travel with me. If I tell you what I did, then you won't want to travel with me. So why take the chance? I don't want to know, and you don't want to tell me. As long as we understand each other, it doesn't matter. Clear, transparent communication is the key. That doesn't make any sense. Neither does reality. We've all got to live in it. OK, then. Have you got a plan for when we reach the surface? I need more information first. We'll just have to get her talking. Well, she's one of you, right? A time lady? Well, that's my current hypothesis, yeah. Why'd you ask? Shouldn't be that difficult, then. Doctor? Yeah? What if we don't? I don't follow. Well, it seems to me I have two choices. Certain death on the surface, or whatever's lurking deeper in these caves. It would seem that way, yeah. And since she hasn't chased us into the caves, it's clear she's expecting us to come to her. That does appear to be her strategy. It's all very theatrical for a simple assassination, isn't it? Almost like she's holding a grudge. This whole scenario is perfect for psychological warfare. It does seem rather personal. I'm not talking about the memory caves. I'm talking about the sun. Go on. Well, people are naturally afraid of the dark. It's an instant, involuntary panic response. Very true. And in contrast, light is often seen as a symbol of hope, warmth, safety. Yeah, but not here. Here, it's reversed. Yeah, but that's just the natural composition of the planet, isn't it? I mean, 
You're just describing your own cultural perspective as a human. Or that perspective is being manipulated. You said yourself that this world was impossible. What if it's impossible by design? What if we're just pieces in some sick, twisted game? <gasps> I was wondering when you'd get there. You knew? Well, I puzzled it out, yes. Why didn't you tell me? You're supposed to figure that out for yourself. That's how it works. The game? Yeah. Well, I'm sick of playing. Maria, where are you going? Deeper into the cave. I don't think that's how this is meant to work. I hope not. You coming? <laughs> of course. Not sure what you're hoping to find, though. That's the point. Oh? I have two choices. Die on the surface or go deeper. Not knowing whether you'll live from one second to the next is a much better way to go than a drawn-out execution. Plus, you never know. Maybe we'll find some way to win? Schrodinger's risk. Exactly. You're starting to sound like me. I hope not. Come on, let's go. Maria, you know what's funny? What? Well, you know how when you throw a frog in a pan of boiling water it'll jump straight out? I've never done that. Do you do that? And you know how when you leave a frog in a pan of cold water and then heat it up, it'll stay in the pan until it dies? Is this what the pond in the TARDIS is for? <gasps> is that why it's next to the kitchen? No. I think you might be missing the point. I really hope I am. Well, you know how when you first realise you're getting old? What are you trying to say? Well, it's not something that happens over time. One minute you're a strapping young thing with a face full of wrinkles and a lovely mane of silver. The next you're looking in the mirror and see... Well, this. Your eyes aren't your eyes anymore. They're tired. Weary. From so much... Well, carnage. So much blood. Immense change has taken place, but... It was so gradual the brain couldn't process it. I don't see how that... Oh my god! Something the matter? Doctor, the walls! Yes? There's a heartbeat! The walls have a heartbeat! Ah! Oh, that smell! Oh, I didn't notice it before! Yeah, the cave has been gradually changing for a bit now. That's what I was trying to get at with the frog stuff. The cave appears to have transformed into some, well, organic structure. Certainly warm to the touch. Yeah, I can feel that too. Uh, well, why do you, do you lick it? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, chlorine, magnesium, and a bunch of other stuff. Selenium? There's definitely a pinch of molybdenum in there too. That's quite the body of evidence. It's not just base elements though. The aftertaste hints at complex molecular structures. Water, protein, Fats, carbohydrates. There's even traces of hydroxylapatites. Hydroxy what? Hydroxylapatites. They're a kind of calcium based mineral. Calcium? As in bone? Yes! So this cave is alive? I don't know, is it? Well, it certainly seems to be. It certainly does. So I suppose we can conclude that it is? No. No. It's too easy. I don't follow. If this cave really was alive, if this whole world was some gigantic, incomprehensible creature, then it would explain it. We'd be secure in the knowledge that we knew what we were dealing with. Know your enemy. Uh, I don't follow. Liar. You know exactly what I mean. This is all a big game. Don't you think it's strange? As soon as we go off the beaten path, a perfectly satisfactory answer just falls into our lap. Well, sometimes that's just all you have to do. Sometimes, yes. Not this time. This time we're up against someone who knows you. Someone who's clearly put a lot of time into thinking up the perfect strategy to defeat you. You really think they'd make figuring out the riddle this easy? You think they'd rely on you sticking to the plan? <sighs> Suppose not. Stop it! Stop it now! Stop what? This! Feigning ignorance, playing the part. You've already figured all of this out! Well, you have to figure it out. For myself, yes. That's what I'm doing right now. This isn't a game for me. 
I'm not trying to prove how clever I still am. I'm fighting to stay alive. Maria, please. Don't touch me. You did nothing to save my first home, then blew up my second. Now you drag me along as your pet canary through the armpit of space and time. What are you talking about? I taught you the meaning of Christmas. To rescue a murderer. And what about the Mary Celeste? Oh, yeah, the Mary Celeste. Where I got to watch that poor man get eaten by a sugar because you made a bet. I did every one of those things for a reason. I understand that. I understand that you're doing good around the universe. I know what kind of toll it takes to weigh up lives against each other. I've seen what happens when comrades in arms are selected with information. Comrades in arms? It's what we are, isn't it? Look, I know I give you a hard time, but it's only because I'm frightened out of my life for most of it. You don't show it. Well, I am. Look, what I'm saying is, I trust you with my life. I just wish you'd be more forthcoming. You're right. I am. Our opponent is definitely a time lady. And definitely not part of the official military command. What makes you say that? Well, based on the armour, it would appear that she spent some time with a faction paradox. Of course, it could also be a red herring. Whoever they are, they've got some kind of deep personal collection with me. That narrows it down a bit, right? Only to a few million potential suspects. I've been at this a long time. Plus, that connection might have not developed yet. They could be from my future. It could be you from the future. Then why would I want to erase me from existence? I'd be killing myself. <sighs> Maybe a suicidal. It's happened before. I'm sure it has. Doctor, my hands. They're bleeding. What? Both of them. It won't stop. Did you, did you put yourself on something? No. I, just, I don't know what this is. Uh, you need to stay calm. You've already lost a pint of blood. You've entered the first stage of hypovolemic shock. Doctor, I'm scared. J just try to keep calm, please. Whatever this is, I'm going to help you. I feel weak. You've lost two pints. You've entered the second stage. No sign of any abrasions or cuts. Skin is cold and clammy. Doctor. Not now, Maria. I'm trying to save your life. Uh, increased anxiety corresponding with heart rate. Doctor, look behind you. This isn't a pantomime, Maria. Look! The way back, it's disappeared. So's the way forward. We're trapped. Doctor, let it happen. What? Let me die. I should have died a long time ago. Maria, you're not making any sense. I'm not leaving you here. I never thanked you, by the way. Thank me? What could you possibly have to thank me for? Please hold on, Maria. You showed me. Showed you what? Showed you what? Maria. Wake up. Wake up right now. Please wake up, Maria. Don't leave me alone here. No, you're right. You've earned your rest. I know you can hear me. I know you killed her. Why? I said why! I know you control this world. I know you can rewrite the laws of time and space on a whim. You could wind up the gravity, crush me into a pulp if you wanted. I also know you can bring her back. So do it. We'll complete your little game just the way you want, but first, you have to bring her back. She doesn't deserve to die like this. At least give her a sporting chance. What makes you think you know what she deserves? Ah, she speaks. So sure of yourself. So sure you understand. Do you accept my terms? I do. What's going on? Another illusion? Not an illusion. Then what? The truth. 
Oh, feels like there's a couple of humans living in my head. Well, this is new. Feels more real this time. <laughs> Helena Prime. Must be another of your memories. What do you think, Maria? Oh, right. I'm coming to find you, Maria. I promise I'll make this right. Chandler's Law. You were doing so well. I'm dead. I'm so dead. Hello there. Uh, is this a bad time? If I can make it to the checkpoint. If I can just... <laughs> ah! You appear to have been shot in the leg. Would you like some medical attention? <laughs> Great shot, Maria. I don't think he'll walk again. Pin him against the tree. We need information. Yes, ma'am. Briggs, Sledge, help me prop him up. Sure thing, Dash. He's a heavy one. So what's the plan? Do you know what this is? Uh, a, a... a knife. <laughs> oh, you poor sweet thing. This isn't just a knife. It's a Gerber Mark 2000. The deadliest combat knife in history. This isn't like that crude auto-slicer you use to cut the throats of underage prisoners. It's a work of art. A perfect instrument of death. Oh, here she goes, waxing poetic about the Gerber again. <laughs> <laughs> My colleagues don't understand the finer things in life. It's creepy when you talk like this. Pass me a ration pack, Sledge. I'm starving. Would you like a massage with that? Now that you mention it. They don't understand all the wonderful things you can do with the human form. It makes my skin crawl. Now just imagine how he feels. Oh, Maria. Here's what's going to happen. We know about the weapons depot two clicks east from here. We also know there's a mortar outpost somewhere in this jungle. You're going to tell us where it is. Weapons depot? Uh, I don't know about any... Amazing what a thumb can do to a bullet wound, isn't it? The things I can do with just a little... Ah! Twist. As I said, you're going to tell us where the mortar is. If you don't, I'm going to skin your fingers and feed you the shape. By the bug, Maria! I'm trying to eat! She's a professional. Let her do her job. Pass the salt. And just think, if I can do that with your hands, imagine what I can achieve with the rest of... All right. All right. I'll talk. I'll talk. Go on. I don't know anything about weapons depots. But but there is a mortar station just a few clicks northeast of here. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> You didn't have to kill him. You really think he wouldn't have killed you? This is a war. People die. Still. Let's get moving. I want that mortar secured yesterday. Right you are. Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. Hold here. See that? Three sentries up ahead. Riggs, Sledge, set your rifles to sniper mode. Right. Three, two. Three confirmed kills. Good, let's grab that mortar. We'll set it up once we have a visual in the depot. Uh, Maria? Yes? The shells. This is bleeder dust. Bleeder dust? It must be from the weapons depot. Well then, let's give it back to them. Come on. If you say so. Come on, you two. Bring a few shells and let's get moving. I don't like this. Not one bit. Looks like we found it. This place is huge. They must be housing enough munitions to glass the whole continent here. Set up the mortar. We'll be detected once we get the first shot in. Good. 
We've been skulking around the jungle too long. I'll fire the mortar. Dash, I need you on backup in case I take a bullet to the brain. Riggs, Sledge, I need you on sniper support. I don't want anything getting within 200 metres. Understood? Understood. Understood. Everybody ready? Ready. 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 For freedom! Looks like you got their attention. Hold the line! Don't let anything get through. That's half the depot covered in bleeder dust. Two more shots should finish the job. Uh, they aren't letting up. Primark shop troopers advancing up the hill. I've got them. Ha ha ha! Choke on that! Uh. Maria! It'll take more than that to finish me. Looks like they're trying to surrender. Let them try. The entire facility has been exposed to the dust. It will become inert momentarily. They're all dead. Good. Let's see if there's anything worth stealing. We'll load a freighter's worth, then blow the rest before reinforcements arrive. We should move quickly. I'll take Sledge and check these warehouses. Dash, you take Riggs and go check the other side of the base. Okay then. Come on Riggs, let's see if we can find some heavy repeaters. I really don't like this. Alright then, we'll see if we can find a missile ranger too. Come on Sledge, let's see what they've been hiding in here. Right behind you. Yeah, it stinks around here. It's the bleeder dust. It slowly turns your innards into liquid, causing you to ooze a thick red fluid through every orifice in your body. Blood. Blood and bits of tissue. Various other fluids mixed in too. It's all very painful and unpleasant. Exactly what these Primarch scum deserve. If you say so. Maria? What is it, Sledge? What kind of weapons depot has farming equipment? What are you talking about? There's a bunch of tools here, look. Oh no. What's wrong? I really hope I am. Oh no. What the hell is that smell? Civilians. What? The intel must have been bad. This isn't a weapons depot. It's an internment camp. You! Riggs! Dash, I'm so sorry. You turned us into murderers! Riggs, really, I'm so sorry. Two thousand. What? I found the inventory. There were two thousand slaves here. Two thousand innocent people, and we butchered them! Riggs, I need you to calm down. Calm down? <laughs> calm down! We murdered hundreds of families today. We're supposed to be protecting these people, and we massacred them. But you don't even care about that, do you? This is war. People die. Right? No. What? No. You didn't kill these people. I did. We all had a hand in this. I gave the order, I pulled the trigger. You're right, Riggs. I'm a monster. I deserve to die right here, right now, for what I've done. What are you talking about? Primarch reinforcements will be here soon. I'll handle them. Maria, you can't. I can and I will. Go. I've lost the right to fight for our people. At least let me have a warrior's death. As you wish. For freedom. For freedom. Goodbye, my friends. Win this war for me. I will see you again. In this life or the next. I promise. I hope so. But it's time to go now. Come on. Let's go! Until the next life. Until then. I'm sorry. Me too. Now go! Alright then. Four carriers approaching. 120 Primarch soldiers on board each one. <sighs> the sky looks beautiful.
Welcome back to the present, Doctor. Did you enjoy your time away? Bring her back to me. You want me to bring her back? After everything, you just... Bring her back to me now! As you wish. Congratulations! You've won the game. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Did you enjoy bleeding to death? I was dead. And I bet you're tearing your mind to pieces trying to figure out... We're in a custom-built universe that you have total control over? Not bad. You realise, of course, I'm still going to kill you. Then why bring me back? I've been wondering that too. Care to explain, Doctor? Doctor? Doctor, are you all right? What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that? You've seen the truth. The truth of what? Bleed or dust. Doctor. I didn't know. I'm so sorry. We were fighting a war. I was trying to free my people. Give me the gun. What? what? The DMAT gun. Give it to me, now. Doctor. I let you into the TARDIS. I trusted you. I, I was trying to save my... You weren't trying to save anyone. I saw the bloodlust in your eyes. I watched you take lives like it was a game. You murdered entire families. Then you tried to selfishly get yourself killed to escape the consequences. No one to answer to when you're dead, Maria Swift. So you're going to execute me? In cold blood? This isn't an execution. It's a rescue. If I erase you from existence, those people won't have to die choking to death on their own blood. I weigh their lives against yours. No contest. Now stop staring at me, Skeletor, and give me the gun! As you wish. You knew this would happen, didn't you? I had considered it. Death regeneration is unpredictable. I controlled for the unexpected. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Doctor! No regenerating from that. He... killed himself. Ripped himself right out of history. I don't have long. Long for what? The doctor needs to have existed. Called my bluff. You win this time, old man. How does he win? He shot himself in the head. <laughs> I was like you once. What does that mean? So many questions. So little time. <laughs> What happened? We're free! Come on, quickly! You shot yourself in the head! Ah, here we are! Let me just get the key! Oh my god, I remember everything! Stop! I order you to stop! Here we are! Come on! Stop in the name of the Draconian Empire! Well, that was all wrapped up rather neatly, don't you? Ow! What the hell was that? That really hurt! Good, now explain. It was a Time Lord thing. Nope. What do you mean, no? I don't want some cute little half answer. I want you to tell me exactly what just happened. It, it's complicated. Then we'll start simple. Who was that? She was a friend, once. Well, more like a student. We used to travel together. You teach her any of that? Some. So what happened? 
Well, I taught her all I could. I took one path, she took another. Why is she hunting me? I don't know. Yet. Okay. What was that place? A custom-built miniature universe. Certain factions in the Gallifrey military use them for extracting information from prisoners. Every aspect of time and space is under the control of the interrogator. Why bother at all, though? She knows more about me than I do. Why didn't she just kill me? I think she was using you to get to me. Using you as a pawn in an elaborate game of wit and will. You must be so proud. <laughs> a little. Listen, I'm sorry I had to lie to you. I know those words must have hurt. A little. But I think I needed to hear them. What do you mean? I've been running from that day my entire life. Now I know I have to own it. I have to do better. It's all we can ever really hope to do, Maria. So what happens now? Our friend is still out there. I imagine she's planning to strike again soon. But we'll be ready this time. Yes. Yes, we will. Just one more question. Yeah? How did you know shooting yourself in the head would bring us back here? Well, I knew whoever she was working for couldn't afford to have me gone from the timeline. I'm so wrapped up in the fabric of history, the results would have been devastating. And knowing this, you shot yourself in the head with a gun that erases people from time. Exactly. Why? Well, I figured she'd have a contingency in case something like that happened. We'd get dumped to the nearest safe spot in our timeline. You risked the entire universe because you figured it would work. You just summed me up quite nicely. What if it didn't? Sometimes that's just the chance you have to take. For some people more often than others. Not every time it works out for the best either, but... Well, you already knew that. Yes. I did. Computer, begin transmission to high command.
First attempt at secondary objective failed. The aberration Maria Swift remains a threat to this universe's timeline. Recommend immediate action to rectify. Primary objective with a resounding success. Psychological profile of the Doctor is complete. End transmission. <laughs>